quiet. It's so awkward. Since you guys are so ready for worship, you guys go ahead and stand up. Sometimes you gotta step down the giant, worship from the lion's den. Sometimes you gotta shout it from the mountain, louder in the valley, trusting that it's gonna get you there. Sometimes you gotta welcome the wonder, wait for the answer. Worship with your hands in the air. I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy. He is worthy of all other praise. Sometimes you gotta pray. In the prison, cry out to heaven, shout it to the door, swing wide. Sometimes you gotta stand on your shackles, brave in the battle, worship with your hands held high. I'll praise you anywhere. Welcome someone around you this morning.
Amen. Amen. Well, if you press down and you're supposed to push up, it doesn't come off. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thanks, Bradley. And just think, Saran called me to text. <laughs> well, we're so glad that you've chosen to worship with us today. I'm going to let my wife uh, greet you. Uh, and then uh, we're going to have a celebration of uh, baptism, and Hallelujah. we'll keep, amen, praise God. <laughs> and then we'll keep things rolling right along. So welcome to Harvest Church. Good morning, Harvest Church. Welcome. Good morning. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for today, an opportunity we have to gather together here in your name uh, to celebrate uh, life, to celebrate those who are making an outward public confession of an inward change and condition. And we ask that you bless their life, that the old man is buried, and that they come up brand new, Lord. And we thank you that they're not the end, but the beginning. And we thank you for that, and we love you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God, Miss Martha, you come on up here. Amen. Praise God. Yes, ma'am. We're fine. Take your time. Take your time. Wow, this is such a privilege, Miss Martha. We thank you so much for allowing us to celebrate in this awesome, awesome celebration. And we thank you. Thank the Lord, as she said. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Well, Miss Martha, we know that you've made a decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. And the old person is going underwater to never rise again. And when you come up, you're a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. You'll take your left hand and hold your nose. Miss Martha, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We thank you so much for allowing us to hit, join in this celebration. Uh, we pray that God uh, takes this moment and richly restores and blesses and returns everything that the enemy thinks he has stolen. Amen. 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 Would you like to say anything or share anything with the congregation? Uh, 
I just want to thank God for this day and for the warm welcome y'all have given us. And um, I give him all the praise and the glory for his faithfulness and his love to me throughout all my years. And today, I rededicate my life to him. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Just share, if you would, take your hold it right there. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You're okay. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And this is Lance A. Bear. <laughs> Amen. Come on up. Lance, we want to thank you so much for allowing us to share this awesome day with you. We pray that God uh, restores you. Uh, share with us last week, there's just things that you're searching for. And we pray that all of those things will come. But most of all, that when you come up, you have the boldness of uh, God and the courage of God to walk out and become everything that you've desired to be and that he's desired for you to be. Would you like to share or say anything to the congregation? Hallelujah. Amen.
And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? What can stand?
Just wanna speak. 
If our ushers would come forward for the uh, taking of our offering this morning. Folks, I don't know if you realize it or not, but look around you. These are the people that's fighting in your army with you. And our church is under attack right now. 
most of it is in a, on a physical level or a medical level, but it's other things that's happening. So these are your these are your warriors right here around you. So lift them up. We're here to bear each other's burdens, and that's what we do. So that's what we need to do at this point right now. Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you thanking you for all your blessings, Lord. Father, I thank you for these tithes and offerings, Father, that's brought before you today, Lord. I pray that you would use them, Father, to further our church for your kingdom in this community and everybody that's around us, God. Father, bless our speaker today as he brings a word to us, God, and let us partake of what he has, God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 In um, honor of our speaker being here today, uh, we as a church always bless our speakers, but also believe that it's important that those who receive from the word should have an opportunity to, to seed into the word. So uh, at this time, we'll receive an offering, a um, love offering uh, for our guests, uh, our family. But uh, so, uh, Father God, we ask it as uh, we receive this offering, Father God, that it will be uh, multiplied as you can multiply, Lord, for the continuing of the ministry uh, from Saran and his family, uh, that countless souls, Father God, will come into the kingdom as a result of uh, this time here, even today, but even beyond as he go forth and continue to to minister i pray that you continue to open doors take him places that he hasn't even imagined or thought of uh, at this point and put him before kings father god that he will have influence that will change a nation and we just thank you for allowing us to be a small part of that and we thank you for it in jesus name and everyone said amen 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 let's worship in our giving
Church is now time for the Harvest Herald. I'm Martin Houston, and I welcome you to this awesome place of worship. And I'm so privileged to pastor this awesome church. Got just a couple of announcements. First of all, uh, it's a little early, but I want to remind you or give you a heads up so you can get involved, get engaged with our VBS. Uh, it's going to be June 16th through the 19th. We need all types of volunteers. Uh, and people to help support that, and we'll give you more information regarding that uh, starting next week, but wanted to go ahead and get that on your radar. Also, want to remind you that uh, here at Harvest Church, we need people to get involved, get engaged, start serving, start using your gifts. We need a van driver for our youth, especially as we head into the summer months so that we can keep them plugged in on Wednesday nights. We need uh, someone to step up and uh, be our children's coordinator. Miss Robin is going to be stepping down, and we need you, if God's called you to that area of ministry, to help uh, lead that. We can do it with a team approach, or you may be called to that area of ministry, but we need you to get involved. And then there's numerous other places for you to connect and serve here at Harvest Church. In Harvest Church, what do we do? We love God, love people. Well, I'm going to need you to help me love on someone here. Uh, in just a moment. But before I do that, let me make one other quick announcement. Please, if you're new here, a guest here, stop by uh, the MVP Lounge. We've actually moved it from the back, uh, in the back area to out here in the foyer. We'd love for you to stop by uh, MVP Lounge where I can meet you, greet you, tell you a little bit more about the church at the conclusion. And now, Harvest Church, it's my distinct privilege and pleasure to introduce you to someone who uh, we go back many moons. We both had a head full of hair back then, and it was all one color, not so much today. But uh, that is our guest speaker today, Saran Stacy. He and I played ball together at Alabama. He has an unbelievable testimony of the goodness of God and how God can bring you through any storm. He's going to be ministering to us today. So Harvest Church, if you would, please stand to your feet and give up some love, because here at Harvest Church, we love God and love people. Help me welcome Saran Stacy to the stage. While you're standing, come on, let's give Jesus the biggest praise this morning. Come on, give it up for Jesus. He's the only superstar in the house today. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the evening, Jesus in the White House, Jesus at Brian Denny, Jesus here at Harvest, Jesus, Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Yeah, he's the only superstar. Thank you so much. You may be seated. I am, I am honored to be here. Um, I looked at my, um, my little phone watch and it said 1045. And so, you know, Pastor Houston is, is you know, <laughs> It's like, you know what, that was not, it wasn't even you, it was Coach Bill McDonald yesterday. He was like, you know those folks over there at that Harvest Church, they're, they're Baptists, they, you got to get them out by 11.30. So, so, so I'm not going to hold you long, but I, I have a word uh, I want to share with you, and, um, and I, I'm, gonna just, I'm just going to be... Uh, I'm just going to be me. I don't have time to go through all of my little, you know, but I live in Franklin, Tennessee now. Uh, Y'all pray for me, okay? Dude? Those Tennessee people are crazy, all right? <laughs> you know, rocky top, rocky top. Yeah, that's all I, you know, but but that's why I, I got remarried in 2013. I got an amazing wife, and uh, we, we have we had, we had four daughters. So, um, my daughter Shelly is 21. She's in Liberty University now. Uh, you know, she's going to graduate in December, and I have a... I have a nine-year-old, I have a seven-year-old, I have a four-year-old, I have a three-year-old. So, yeah, and they're all girls, okay? I even got a girl dog. <laughs> so, but, but, you know, and my, my, you know, my history, you know, in ministry goes back this June. I'll be celebrating 16 years of full-time ministry, and the Lord has allowed me to go and travel places. And, and, I, and let me tell you something. I wouldn't be here without the prayers of the righteous. And so many people in here, I just want to say hello and honor y'all for coming out here today. The, the Dunaway family is back here. Wave your hand, Matthew and Jennifer. And her, thank y'all so much 
for coming. Y'all been a, a just a close uh, a friend of mine and Shelly, and, and I thank y'all for being here. Jeff Tony, he's Dothan, Alabama, man. He's up here. His daughter plays uh, on a softball team at Alabama, and she's doing amazing. And, and thank you for showing up today. There's something about showing up. You know, Pastor Martin was up here teaching earlier in, in, in Bible, uh, in, in the Sunday school. I mean, it was, it was awesome. And he talks about forsake not yourself to assemble. Don't miss out. That God says if you just show up, you're going to be blessed. Yeah, and so I implore all of you in here, just keep getting into the house of God. Keep keep connecting to one another. Keep looking at each other. Don't don't get into this, this society that's worldly now. No one wants to look at each other. No one wants to say hello. No one wants to say how you're doing. No one wants to smile. It's just this detached society. But God calls us a peculiar people, amen? He calls us a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and we're not like the world. Amen? We're not like the world. And so, man, thank you for coming and, and, and you know, anyone else. But I want to honor the man of God, the woman of God, you know, Martin and, and, and his amazing wife, Ms. Cassandra. They have been, like, just, you know, just intimate friends for go back 30-plus years ago. And Martin is always, you know, he was always opening up doors for me when we played football. You know, our first two plays, we scored two touchdowns because I'm falling behind this, this joker. You know, he's knocking people out of the way. And Martin was exceptionally talented, you know. I know that y'all have this saying that he has a, he's a man of many hats. But, but let me tell you something. He was a fierce football player. It reminds me of Reggie White. I played with Reggie White at the Philadelphia Eagles, and, and Reggie was called the minister of defense. And, and I, mean, I mean, Reggie was just like, you know, I mean, he would, he, would, I mean, he would tear you up, you know. But when he would come off that field, he would be so passionate, so caring. He was always, you know, talking about Jesus. And, you know, and that reminds me of Martin. You know, Martin just, he loves the Lord. And all that, but when he got out on that football field, Martin was crazy, you know. <laughs> he was like, he, he went to another place. And so, man, I want to honor you, just not just for, you know, allow me to come here today, but for what you have done in God's kingdom, you and your amazing wife and family. Can we stand to our feet and give them a great thank you for what they have meant to the body of Christ? Come on, put those hands together. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, I know that, I know it's the prayers of the righteous that avail of much. And you know, let me give you a quick thing about this, this, this. Why am I here? You know, it's A-Day, you know, and the University of Alabama is having their spring game. And, and I'm a proponent of the university. I'm always going to be connected to it. I love the Tide. I have loved, you know, not just, not even before Nick Saban was there, you know, not even before Coach Stalin, but Bear Bryant. You know, Bear Bryant sold me years ago. And I've always loved Alabama. And, I've, and, and so along the way, if I can get back and add to that great legacy, man, I will go do it. And so this year, it was, you know, A-Day game. And I was, you know, I, I need to go and support our new coach, you know. I need to get down there and see former players like JT and, and talk with other people. And, and you know, it, it all comes from my time in January. Every year since 2008, I would go to a place alone. I would get by myself, and I want to hear what thus says the Lord. And I would do things that, you mean, I wish I had time to tell you, but, but I want this to make sense to you, this message. I would go up into these mountains. I would go on these hikes. And I would just sleep out there at night, you know. I would just, you know, I would, I would do it, you know. I was up there, Mount LeConte, up there in the Great Smoky Mountains. And, and, but this past January, I'm going up to Mount Pisgah in North Carolina. It's a Mount Pisgah forest, and it's a 30-plus mile hike. And it's in the winter. And I'm going up there by faith. You know, Jesus went up there. I mean, y'all talking about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus was going up in those mountains. Moses was going up in those mountains. Martin was teaching a great teaching earlier. Moses was going up into those mountains without fear. So him out with his 50-pound backpack and, you know, along my wife said, Honey, can't you just get somebody to go with you? And I, I said, I tried. It, it, it got, you know, they won't go, you know. It's too cold. No, I didn't call Martin. I already knew the answer to that. But I went up. I would go up there, and, and I would, you know, I would just 
you know, I, it's all by faith. And every single time I do it, I realize after the first day, I'm way in over my head. Right? I'm like, what are you doing up here? Because once you get out there, you, there's no, there's no cell phone. There's nothing. You know, animals out there, and you know, so, so I, I go up there, and and I'm and I'm praying to God, and I'm, you know, and I'm, and I'm sleeping on the ground. I don't have a tent, and you know, and I'm fasting, and and I'm going to six thousand elevation, and and I'm being, I'm, I'm getting, I'm being depleted. I'm pushing myself. Because I want to hear from the Lord. What do I say to people in 2024? You know, he just spoke a word into my spirit up there. He says, my son, this is the year of the big. Yeah, this is a big year. This 2024. And I'm going to tell you what, you crept into 2023, you know, 2024, hold it on to 2023. You, let me tell you what, you're going to get woke up today. Because God is calling for the big out of your life. He's doing some big things in the body of Christ. It, it is, it, it's been a, I don't have time to go through it all, but when I, when, I, when I come out of that mountain, you know, I saw my wife. I said, honey, you got a brand new husband. I saw my girls. I said, you got a super dad now, you know, and I said, I'm going to, you know, all these things that, that was welled up inside of me. And, and, and so, so I've been on this trail. January, February, March, and then I'm getting into April, and I'm, you know, I, my ministry is by faith. You can go to serenstacy.org. You can see my family. You can see why I'm here today, but, 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 but it's all by faith. I just go places by faith, believing that God has spoken something inside of me to go do it. And so I remember this last week, I was I'm going to go to the A-Day game. The Lord's putting that in my spirit, but then he put Martin in my spirit. Because Martin had gave me this, like, open invitation a while back. He said, come, if you're ever in town. And, 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 and I, so, so I prayed about it. And, and so I, I text Martin. I said, you know, pray with Cassandra. And y'all, if y'all feel like I should come in and, and speak a word. And, and I didn't hear back from him, you know. <laughs> you know? I said, well, maybe, maybe I'm not going to that church, you know. You know. <laughs> you know? And then my wife is, like, saying, you know. And, and, and she goes, like, she said, did I get a text, a, a, a text like, Thursday, you know, Thursday night? Martin's like, yeah, come on, you know. And, I said, oh, man, okay. I said, all right, I guess I'm preaching there then. I said, God is in it because I know these two. I know they've been praying about it. It's the power of prayer. There's one thing that you don't get out of this message. Don't leave out of this door today without a, a committed prayer life. You're going to commit, even the young boys and young girls, this message is going to hit every, all of us. You need to pray. I, had this kid, I have a church now up in in Franklin, and, and we do a home church. About 20, 30 people come, and, and, and you know, and, and, and this little kid came, and, and he came up to me, maybe six years old. He's like, he says, Pastor Saran. I said, what is it? He says, I pray every night now before I go to bed. Little kid. The little ones, man, that, that moved my heart, man, you know. He's starting a prayer life. Young people, you got to pray. You got to pray for your parents. You got to pray for your community. You got to pray at church. You got to pray in your schools. You got to pray. This is the year. You can't just go through 2024 this way. God is calling something big. There are big things happening in our, uh, our, our country right now. But there's some big things that are happening in our local community. And when I was praying earlier this morning, there's something big that the God is wanting to do here at Harvest. He, he wants to do it. So I got into April. I got into April, and it was like when I was, you know, I went back up there again in February, right? Because I didn't, you know, I said, I got to finish this thing. Because I, I go back up there, and when I come out, because the Lord put this in my spirit, he's going to do something big in my life in this April, 30 days. And so he said, tell my people to work with me. Yeah. Say that with me. Work with me. Yeah. Work, work with God. He said, you know, you know God's going to do it, but you got to do something. You got to do something. Work with him. Work with him and watch what God do this month. Mm. Yeah. And so, so, so there I am. You know, this is why I'm here. I'm working with the Lord. And, and I got into prayer. He started showing me this, 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 this time. That it's, it's, it, even today, there are people, it, you need this word. And I'm going to just deliver it. Now, how many of you in here have heard of the term um, NDE? Yeah. What 
does that mean, sweetheart? What's your name? Jeannie. What does that mean? In the end? No. N D E. Anybody ever heard that? Okay. So hold on to it. All right. Hold on to it. I'm going to give you something. Okay. Let's just sing this song. Okay. And, and then I'll get into this message. Right. I'll get into it. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a sanctuary for you. And hallelujah, 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 and hallelujah, and hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I will be a living sanctuary for you. NDE is near death experience. You, when you start looking it up or listening to individuals that have had this NDE experience, that their testimonies are phenomenal. All the times the individual they had been in the operating room, they was on some operating table, and and and, and or they was in some car wreck, or there was some type of tragic thing happened, and, and they were they were they were somehow launched out of their bodies. And started going, yeah, you went, started going towards this tunnel, and they could see this light. And at the end of this tunnel, they get into this euphoric place that everything is perfect. And, and it's like they don't, they, they, they can't explain it, right? But they don't want to come back. They, they're given the option to stay or go back, and they always, I don't want to go back. They have to be sent back, right? Now, is that biblical? Is that scripture in this? I want to touch on a scripture today in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, verses 1 through 9. There was an individual that experienced this NDE phenomena, right? He experienced it, and, and this is what the Lord put down on inside of me to share. If you have those scriptures, could you just bring it up? I don't, just for time's sake, I don't want to, you know, just, I want to go through it. But Paul, he's the author of this text. It's the church at Corinth, right? It's his second letter or epistle that he had written unto them. And, and essentially, he is speaking these words. He said, he said, no, verse 1, <laughs> verse 1. He said, he said, he said, it is expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to vision and revelation of the Lord. What is That's a kind of a tough little statement. But, but what he's saying is that he's like, look, I, I don't want to receive any glory. But because of y'all accusations against me, because y'all keep saying you are not an apostle, Jesus didn't, all these things. He says, look, I'm going to tell you about my track record. And he speaks about it in, 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 in the previous chapter. In chapter 11, you read about it. He said, look, I was beaten five times by the Jews, save one, right? I was thrown out into the ocean. You know, I was shipwrecked. He said, I went through all types of perils. I went through perils for, against my enemies. I went through perils of people that were in my church. He said, you know, he's, he goes on to a litany of what he went through. I've been through fasting and prayers out there in the, the deep, hungry. And, and he, 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 he goes through all of that in chapter 11. And then he says, look, I don't want to take any glory for this. But listen to me, because y'all keep pushing me, you know, he says, he says, you're making me uncomfortable. In verse 2, he says, when you bring up verse 2, he goes on, he says, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years, 
whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. He, he says, he says, whether he goes on and says, such a one was caught up in the third heaven. Now, logistic teaches us if there's a third heaven, there's a what? There's a second and a first, right? So we know the scripture teaches us there are at least three heavens. And without getting bogged down into this, you know, this, because Paul said he knew a man. He's speaking in the third person form, or some people say there was actually a man. It wasn't Paul. But the truth of the matter is, it is the word of God. Amen? He says, I cannot tell. He said, but God knoweth. In the next verse, he goes on and says these words. I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Second time he said it. It's like a verly, verly, or surely, surely. He's speaking this twice so you can catch hold to it. He's not sure what Paul is saying. I'm not sure if I'm having a vision or am I having this out-of-body experience. But he says, God knows. Yeah. That's what he's saying. He's saying, he says, I can't, I can't, I can't tell, but God knows. The next verse, is, let, let's continue, and, and I'm going to pray. He says, how that he was caught up in the paradise, this is heaven, and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Look at what he's experienced. He's in his paradise. Don't it sound like this NDE? He is seeing things that, that's so amazing that he, he can't even speak about it. He can't put it into terms. And then when you listen to these people that have these NDEs, you know, near-death experience, they say the same language. He goes on to say in the next verse, of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. The next verse, he says, for though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. I'll be a fool. To, to, to say, oh, I'm some important person. I'm some great man. Look, I experienced paradise. I experienced, and he said, I will be a fool. But well, I will say the truth. For now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. Next verse. He says, he says, unless I should be exalted above measure. Yeah, yeah. He says, lest I should be placed up to this mantle. He says, he says, the abundance of the revelation that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Let's continue on. And he goes on, he says, for this thing I besought God three times that it might depart from me. Whatever pain that he was dealing with, whatever suffering that he was dealing with, whatever spirit that had got a hold of him, he wanted it to leave. And three times he begged God to do it. He says, Lord, do this for me. And how many of us, we beg God to do some things in our lives, and God hadn't done it. And this is the truth of the matter is, he hasn't done it. And, we, we, and so he goes on and says, and he says unto me, let's all read it together. My grace is sufficient for thee. Stop right there. My grace is sufficient for for thee. And so I'm going to this text. I've titled this message three words, but God knows. But God knows, people. People of God, God knows. And let me just pray. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for Harvest Church. Thank you for the leadership uh, in this church. God, thank you for those amazing baptisms. It brought my, brought my eyes to tears, Lord. See that woman get in there at the age that she is and and come back up, God, full of life, God, full of your glory. Thank you, God, for allowing us to witness this, God. And so, God, the word, let the word come through now. God, in the time that's been allotted to me, let it come through, let it bless, let it edify. God, do the big thing that I know that you are calling to do right now in this church this morning. There's a big thing, Lord, that you want to do today. So, Father, I don't, I don't, I don't want to mess that up. So, Holy Spirit, manifest yourself in such a way, God, that lives are forever changed this April the 14th, 2024. In the name of Jesus, every wicked and defiled spirit that has trespassed into this house, you are commanded by the authority of the name of Jesus to leave now and do not return. Now, Father, glorify yourself. All this glory, it belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So here it is, these things. Let's look at this text again. 
Paul says, because he was being, you know, you know, he, he because you know he was preventing his pride to go to way up here. He says a messenger of Satan was sent to him. When you look at that messenger of Satan, it's really an angel, right? It's, it's that's what we talk about in Revelation. You know, these these different churches. There's an angel. There's this spirit that was sent to Paul that started buffeting him. And when you look up buffet, it, it means literally to 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 cast to to throw a blow. To cut off that Greek word. It, it means to it means to strike and strike and strike and strike. And this is the mode of Satan operation. This is what he does in our lives. Satan, he's on this earth to wear us down. You know he wants to wear you down. It's like every time you step one step forward, you get knocked two steps back. Every time you get two, three baptism, then you get accused of, I mean, just he's going to strike. Your marriage is on the rocks, and, you know, we're trying to go to counseling, and we make it a little headway, and all of a sudden, you know, all hell breaks loose. And if, uh, let me ask you this. In this month of April, have you been going to uh, unusual, just, just, you know, what, uh, yeah, burdens, unusual, just, you know, contentions? This month, ask yourself, have you been in contentions with your uh, a job or with your family? Uh, but, but see, this is what Satan wants to do. He wants you to do this thing. He wants you to quit. He wants you to give up. And I come here to harvest today to tell somebody there is no giving up. There is no quitting. There is no, here it is right now. We got to watch our words. Whatever words that are coming out of our mouth, these words got to be edifying, right? That's what the Bible says. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. And so when you get in contention, what's the Bible says? A soft answer will turn away wrath. What's your name, sweetheart? Sherry. If I'm getting in contention with Sherry, I'm not going to shut your, you know, I'm going to miss it. He said, grievous words stir up anger. We got to watch our mouths. Because here's the thing about it. Do not, I'll give you this one quick point. Do not make a, a, a permanent decision in a temporary season. You can't make a deal breaker decision in a temporary season. You cannot quit. You cannot, I don't love you. I don't, I hate you. You can't do it. When you do it, you fall into this territory of ineligibility. Whatever God has for you this month, man, your words got to line up with your actions. Amen, somebody? You got to understand your words are powerful. Your words, you know, let me tell you what, you can trap yourself with the word. Bring up Proverbs 12 and verse 13. It says this. It says that if you bring up the scripture, it talks, the wicked is snared by the transgressions of his what? His lips. We, 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 that snare is trapped. We are trapped by our own lips. Oh, I, I hate this job. I, this job is killing me. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't. Oh, my wife, boy, whoo, boy, I, she's a, you know, I, she's a hellraiser. You know, I mean, we just say stuff. Boy, I gotta go in this house and listen to all this. You know, I mean, we just our lips. <laughs> Somebody laughing at me, but y'all know I'm telling the truth. We got to guard our mouths. If you are going to overcome the strike and strike and strike and hitting and hitting and blows and blows, you got to get your mouth right. You got to get that. You got to start speaking life. Well, Scripture says life and death is in the power of your tongue. You got to say, I am. Yeah. You got to say, I am a child of God. Can you say that with me right now? I am a child of God. I am strong. Say it again. I am strong. I am kind. No, you sound like a you sound like a Presbyterian church. Okay, now, let's try it again. Let's try it again. If you really believe that you're strong, you'll say it. I am strong. I am kind. I am lovely. I am brave. I'm not stupid. I'm not dumb. I'm a child of God. I can do all things with Jesus. Amen, somebody. Give him thank you right now. I am. Somebody shout, I am. I am. I am. Because the striking, the enemy is telling you opposite. 
The enemy is telling you all of those negative emotions that Martin was talking about earlier in that Bible study. He's telling you you're worthless. Give up. And so you must get to a place where you start operating with that authority that Christ, he's, you, we, we quoted Christ is in us. But how many believe that Jesus is on the inside of us? If you believe that Jesus is on the inside of you, then no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. You have to, my people. Don't make that permanent decision. Be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Yeah. The next point I want to give you is about it's about, it's about being, like, being truthful. You know, when, when, these, when these things come against you, you got to be truthful. Paul says, look, this thing was, was, was tearing me up. And he had gotten to a low place that really Paul wanted to die. He wanted to get out of here. He wanted to quit. And, you know, the Bible says, when we say no quitting, we have to understand it's going to take truth to deliver you. And I'm going to show you a scripture that you never read, right? <laughs> you, you read it, but you just never looked at it. Look at 1 um, Samuel chapter 16 and verse number 14. Will you bring that up, please? He, Saul, I don't have time to put all this together, but Saul was basically, he, he, was, he was rejected by God. Now, the Bible says, but the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and what? Came from who? Mm-hmm. Never read that before. <laughs> yeah. I don't have time to unpack that, but, but listen to me. It can't, the, how, can you, how can anything evil come from God? But my point is this. I want you to catch hold of there are times when evil spirit come upon us, and they want to, they want to wear you out. And they know your genealogy. They know your granddaddy, your grandmama. They know your papa. You know, they know all of this stuff. And they, they know your weakness, and they want to wear you out. And it's like it won't leave. Verse 23, here it is. This, this is the remedy to it. Bring up verse 23. Uh, uh, yeah, and it came to pass when the evil spirit from God, it came from God again, was upon Saul that David took a harp and played with his hand, so Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit did what? So listen to me. That's the remedy. Well, Saran, how do I get over this depression? How do I get over this heartache? It is my words. Yes, it's with your word, but it is also with worship. When you worship God, when you just do practical things, get around the people of God, when you just show up, JT, when you just go and do the small things, God's going to breathe on that small thing, and it is going to big, big, big. Whoa, that's what he gave in my spirit. I was up in that mountain. He said, tell the people, thus says the Lord, I'm about to take small things, and I'm going to breathe on them, and they become big, big, big thing. Yeah. Whoa, say it with me, big, big, big. Yeah, 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 the big, big, big. Yeah, I want the big, big, big blessing. Yeah, I want the big, big, big anointing. I want the big, big, big. Glory to God. Hallelujah this Sunday morning. Glory Glory to God. I'm going to take small churches. I'm going to take small house groups. I'm going to say I'm going to take the retards. I'm going to take all the people that everybody cursed out and talked about, laughed at, made fun of. But the waste is not one to the swiftest. Amen. But he that it do it to the end shall be delivered. God's going to do some big, big, big. And one of the things that, that we can do is worship. We can come to church. We can fast and pray. We can go up in, you don't have to go up in the mountains like that, you know. But I'm telling you what, you can, you can do it. You can do those. Deuteronomy 16 and 16 talks about men to, to, to three times a year get away from their families and go up to Jerusalem. You talk about a man leaving now, Cassandra, you, you like, I can't even get him off the couch. <laughs> you know? yeah, you know? yeah. Not you, much, But yeah, yeah. But you get what I'm saying? We've got to be men. We are called to be ambassadors of Christ. Well, be the ambassador. Be the ambassador. Be the man. Cover your wife in prayer. Cover your children in prayer. Cover, cover your pastor in prayer. Be the man. Quit being weak. How many women here want a weak man? I don't see any women raise their hand. You know, <laughs> They don't want a weak man. 
They want a strong man, a confident man. Like when the kids are running around, tearing up the house, so he can come in there and say, hey, y'all got to settle down. He, she needs that man that's going to look at her and say, sweetheart, we're going to get through this. You're going to quote uh, Philippians 4 and 19. Our God is going to supply all of our needs. It doesn't look like it right now, but I'm going to use these lips to speak life. God is going to make a way. Amen. God's going to open up a door. Glory to God. But well, here it is. We've got to tell the truth about where we are. Hence, go back 30 plus, no, not 30 plus, but go back. In 2008, June 4th, June 4th, 2008, was the birthday of my two-year-old daughter that was killed in that tragedy. She would have been three years old. And part of that, I don't have time to go through all of that, but part of that tragedy, that night I lost my wife, Ellen, who was 36 years old. I lost my 18-year-old daughter, Lucretia Michelle. I lost my 10-year-old son. I lost my nine-year-old daughter. I lost my two-year-old baby. And, and, and the, the whole world changed. And so afterwards, Martin and so many people were praying for me, and I'm trying to do, I'm trying to live, I'm trying not to die. But here it is, I wanted to die. I wanted to give up. And I got around some group of men down there at Destiny Worship Center, like my inner circle, and June 4th was coming around, and it was Ellie's birthday and I was trying to, you know, you know, the Lord's not going to put more on you than, than you can bear. And I, I'm trying to quote scriptures. But the truth of the matter was I was sinking. I was drowning. And that night, we, we, we had a little meeting. And at 11, I was supposed to stay the night with this guy. And I told him, I said, I, I, I got to go. So, so, something came on me. He said, where are you going, Saran? You know, I said, no, I, I got to go. I got to go, man. I said, I see you. And so I leave. And, and I prayed about this before. I said, Lord, do you want me to go there? He said, go here. And so I left and I drove up to the, to the Destin, uh, the Midbury Bridge. It's a bridge there. And I stood on that bridge that night weeping. And I was completely alone. And it was a dark night. And you couldn't see any stars. And I don't know if I was in my right mind or out of my right mind, but God knows. I don't know. I, I just wanted to die. And so I stood up there. I, I got up on that bridge. And it was just a sea of darkness. And you couldn't hear nothing. It was just like, it was just like, a wind came and blew me back. And I come up there again. And and it blew me back. And then I get down from the bridge and I drive to Geneva. And that's where, you know, there's a, that's where Ellen Bronson and Ellie is laid to rest. And my two daughters, Lucretia and Michelle, they were laid to rest in Hartford, Alabama. And then I bought a plot right beside Ellen. And on that night, it's got Saran stage. That's where I'm going to be buried one day. That night, I said, God, I'm done. I have been fasting. I refuse to eat. And I was skinny. I was a nobody, and all I could hear that striking and striking and striking, that buffeting, that you was the adulterer, you was the liar, you was the delinquent father, you didn't, I just kept bam and bam and bam, and I was like, I'm done, I just want the pain to go away, and so I laid out there that night on that ground, June 4th, and I said, Lord, when I wake up, I, I want to be, I believe in God. But I was done with this life. This life had failed me. And I, again, you know, I can't, you don't have time to go through all that. But, but there I was. I, I said, when I close my eyes, I don't, I don't want to wake up. And when I opened my eyes, I heard, you know, birds. And out there at the, I was still out there at daybreak. And I had, like, stuff had been biting me all that night. And then. I get in my car. I don't even know how I made it to my house. But I remember when I got to my house, I sat down in there, and I said, you didn't do it. You didn't take me. You're going to leave me here with this wretched pain. And I heard those words, my grace is sufficient for thee. That's what I heard in my spirit. My grace is sufficient 
for you. I looked up that word in the Greek. I can't pronounce the word, but it means it, 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 it depicts a barrier. Sufficient means enough. Yeah. My, it's like God saying that, that, that Satan, you can only go so far with him. You can't cross this barrier. <laughs> the sufficiency of God. That's what he told me to come and speak to somebody in this house this morning. You are dealing, you're like me. You, you're dealing with life. You're dealing with anguish. You're dealing like Saul, the evil spirit that kept traumatizing him. And you want to give up. You want to check out. But let me tell you something. You have to go through my last little point is you got to go through deliverance. You have to go through deliverance. You have to, the sufficiency of God is that God can deliver you. And God knows exactly what you're dealing with. Maybe the person sitting next to you may not know, but he knows. And I want to encourage you with this. It's like God, Psalm 51 and verse uh, number six, when King David was doing that prayer, he says, thou, O Lord, desires truth in the most inward place. Yeah, if you bring up that scripture, Psalm 51 and verse 6, he says, in the hidden place, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. God desires truth. God brought me here to speak this word to someone in here. You've been called those names. Your spirit is low. Nobody, see, those guys that was with me, they didn't know. They didn't know how far I had fallen. They didn't know that I would actually get to that place that I want to commit suicide. But I was at that place. I was about to make a permanent decision in a temporary season. I was about to do it. But something happened. When God spoke that word, he says, my grace is sufficient. And I started by faith. I started speaking with my lips. That's what's going to do it. It's my lips. And I started being this person of transparency, telling the truth. I'm not a liar. I come here today to speak what does, says the Lord. I know, says the Lord. He knows. He knows what's been holding you back. He knows it. The hate, the anger, the resentment towards your husband, towards your wife, towards your father, for your mother. He knows. And if God knows, he's the one that can deal with it. Deliverance. The power of deliverance. Stand to your feet with me. Will you come and play something uh, quiet on uh, the, 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 the organ, the piano, whatever. Just, you know, I mean, you just but listen to me, people of God. God knows. Somebody say that with me. But God knows. He, he knows. You're not alone. You're not abandoned. You're not rejected. You're not a retard. You're not stupid. You're not some derogatory word. Your husband spoke to you or your wife spoke to you. He knows. But the enemy knows too. And he's going to keep striking and striking and striking until you say, I've had enough. Not enough. I'm going to submit this to God. I'm going to tell the truth. Brother Stacy, I'm, I'm going to tell the truth this morning. I'm in a bad place. I want to be healed. I want my mind to be healed. The Bible says with the mind we serve God. If you can't get your mind right, you won't ever serve him. And you got to do this thing called repent. You got to repent before God. That's what Zacchaeus did. He repented before everybody. And God did a work in that man's life that not only saved him, but saved his whole lineage. Everybody that was in that house got saved. Because one man got up and told the truth. He went through that deliverance. Will you bow your heads with me? Father, you are amazing. You are incredible. There's no word that I can really put to define you. 
And what Paul was trying to speak about, this paradise, this, this near-death experience, to God, Lord, Lord, thank you for allowing his testimony to impact this, this great body of believers. Father, to that soul that's in that anguish, you sent me here to speak to them. That this day, this 14th day, is the big thing that God's about to do in your life. So if you're struggling, I can't define it. Only you can define it. If you're struggling with that suicide, you know, dilemma, and no one knows about it. While you are standing right now, I want you to slip out of your aisles and come here at this altar, and we're going to get rid of that spirit. You just come on up here. You, you know, Psalm 118, verse 17, King David says, I shall not die, but I'm going to live. Will y'all say that with me, everybody? I shall not die, but live and declare the works of God. God is real. He, Brother Martin, he put that in my spirit. He said, son, I want you to go after that suicide spirit. You go after it with every fiber of your being. And you curse those thoughts. And you rebuke the wicked one. And you speak to men in here. That is not by might nor power, but by God's spirit. Men in here. I was running yesterday. I was running down Bryant Denny. Ran down there to the, to, to the Tuscaloosa River and praying. And God showed me a man. In my spirit, I saw a man. Then, if you want to be specific, it's like around the middle age, 50s. I saw him. It's dealing with it. And you need to be set free. Right today. Is that, I'm telling you, come forward right now. Come forward. It takes truth. Only, it's the only thing that can deliver you is truth. You get to this altar and say, Brother Stacy, Pastor Martin, I, I messed up. I'm not treating my wife the way I need to treat her, my children. I don't know what it is, but God knows, but God knows. Will you come? Will you just come? And I'm not going to hold it long because it's the Holy Spirit. He does the work. Glory to God. He's the one. He's the one. Will you come? Will you come? We don't know about tomorrow. We, we have today. We have this morning. But God knows. All that perversion, God knows. Let me tell you something. You can, get, you, you can become brand new today. You can repent and become brand new. I'm going to wait about another minute. Will you come and hug me? Will you come? I'm going to pray over you. I'm going to pray for every person that's come up here at this altar. This young lady that's still here and the other young ladies that, that, that were in the back. It's not over, says the Lord. Be encouraged today. I was sitting here not by happenstance. I was sitting here to speak life to you. That's what's coming out of my spirit, young lady. You will not die. You are, let me tell you what, you are beautiful. You are amazing. You are gifted. And God wants you to show your gift. He wants you to show your gift. What are you dealing with, sweetheart? Lord, my Lord passed away. You lost a child? Yeah. I want to be here no more. I can't keep doing this. I don't know why. When you said it was mine, you Let me tell you something. And I know you've heard it from Pastor Martin and a bunch of these believers. Your little baby's in God's kingdom. And there's a day, there's a promise that David said when he lost his son. He prayed, he says, look, I can't go. I can't, my son can no longer come to me, but one day I will go to him. 
One day you will go to that beautiful creation that God had given you, and somehow he's the only one that can make up time. So you be encouraged. And what the enemy did to steal and, and destroy, we curse right now. Over this family right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak blessing over you, young lady, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I say you will give birth again. I say you will be in a godly marriage. I say you will walk the walk and not just talk the talk, but you will walk out and live out the principle that God has laid for you, young lady. You are, you are gifted. I see it all inside of you. Woman of God, your grandchild, you didn't miss out, thus says the Lord. I am with you, I know. <laughs> the Bible says there's going to be a place where the wicked cease from troubling. And the weary soul is going to be at rest. And God says, I'm going to breathe on you rest today, my daughter. I'm going to breathe. You're going to sleep tonight. You're going to sleep now. Every defiled spirit, by the anointing of Jesus' name only, I command you to leave this woman and never return. I set you free today. I speak life. I release life right now in Jesus' name. It is so. Stretch your hands toward heaven with me. Stretch your hands toward heaven with me. God, you have done it. You've done the work, and you're still doing work out there in that audience. You're still doing it, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Rain down on every man that has his hand. Raise up to you right now. Let the big, big bed fall in their lives, God. Let them, God, present their bodies as a living sacrifice. Let them give it up. Everything that's held them back, let them call on the name of Jesus. If you are not saved, you never submitted your life to Jesus, you can do it today. You can say, Brother Stacy, I saw these people being baptized. I want to give my life to Jesus. And if that's you, just walk out. Just come up here. Just walk out. Just show up for Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus is the forgiver. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the game changer. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Will you come? Whoever you are, will you just come? I want to surrender it all to Jesus. I want to repent. I want to get my life right to, with Jesus. Father, I thank you. God, no stone be unturned. Your word says if it goes out, it's not going to return empty and void. And so, Father, I pray over the next weeks that men that have been dealt, that have been convicted by this word today, that they come to Pastor Martin, and they come to the woman of God, and they say, I want to get right with Jesus. I just couldn't move. I just, but, but I want to confess it. I want to confess it privately. It does, let me tell you something. Confessions comes when the Holy Spirit shows up. So, Father, I thank you for what you have done and what you're doing in this awesome house. God, all the glory, it belongs to you. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. Now, I'm going to go out there in the MVP hall, and I, I got some Saran Stacy pictures and stuff, you know, I'll sign to anybody who want. And I want to pray. I want to pray. If you need prayer, I want to pray for you. You know, the Bible says healing is the children's bread. You know, I don't want to. I've gone over my time. I know <laughs> but let me turn it over to the man of God. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you, uh, Saran. And please, um, as, as we're leaving, he'll be out here. Um, greet him and, and love on him. And um, I know that without a doubt that, that um, the Cumberlands got what God gave for them. But I, I know that there's others who may not have responded by coming out. Uh, that word was for you. Uh, let it take root. Let it um, challenge you and change you. Amen? Um, you know, I, if we all figured it out, we all just a bunch of messed up people that uh, have been saved by grace. Amen? Uh, and saved by faith. And uh, if we recognize that and allow God to do it, uh, do it in us, uh, then we'll, we'll see others begin to follow suit as well. Amen? Um, I challenge you to... 
lift Turan and his ministry up. Um, guys, you know, it's a modern day Job um, who, who lost everything and, um, and, and, and fought through and, and now is changing lives all over the, the country and the world. So I, I ask you to put him on your prayer list uh, as, as one of those that, that needs prayer. The enemy don't like what he does, <laughs> amen. Uh, but uh, let's let's cover cover him in prayer. Uh, we'll be back here next Sunday doing it again, uh, amen. Uh, and uh, of course, we invite you to come out on a Wednesday night uh, as well. Uh, we have a meal at six, uh, free, uh, donations accepted, but free of charge. And then we have worship for all of our different age groups at six thirty. Come on back out here. Harvest Church, what do we do? Oh, y'all better. That sound, that, that didn't, that, that, I'm going to try that again. <laughs> we, 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 we love God better than we just repeated that. <laughs> Let's try that again. What do we do at Harvest Church? And I love you guys. Thank you, church dismissed. Amen.